So on the second panel, we are probably going more into deeper, in a way, at some point, uh, the deeper discussion about community art. And community art uh, is um, temporarily, like seeing, seeing temporarily, it's uh, the work which um, needs quite bigger time, maybe, as a spontaneous uh, action. And I would just like mention here at this point um, the art critic uh, Lucy Lippert, who said uh, that community art is uh, kind of as a Trojan horse. So in a way, artists would smuggle some ideas, some visual tools into communities and empower them in that sense uh, to stand for them, for them on, to speak up, to create the discussion. So, and uh, least, uh, last but not least, uh, the role of curator would also touch um, upon in this uh, discussion, because the curators, as people who would uh, also encourage, create some networks, uh, they're very much based on communication, their work, so in this sense, it becomes uh, stressed also in the work with communities. And the first speaker of this panel is uh, Artur Wablik from Poland, and he's also artist, visual artist, curator, uh, and columnist, as well as researcher of pop culture. And he created a lot of uh, graffitis around Poland, uh, probably in different locations, different contexts. And uh, he was also running a non-commercial art space in Krakow. I don't know if it will come at some point to talk about this also. And uh, in 2011, as quite tendency to institutionalize uh, graffitis came up in Poland, and many graffitis were graffiti, people who would uh, work with graffitis were invited to gallery spaces, to museums. Artur Wablik initiated kind of a contrapoint and started to engage in not commercial workshops outside of the galleries and museums. So um, he will talk about the role of curator in the public spaces. As was said, my name is Otto Webik from Krakow, Poland, and I will be talking about the role of the curator in street art, and we're going to get to the socially involved and, and participatory art at the end, I, I, I promise. But we have to run over a few other things. So, is the role of the curator just about supplying artists with the walls, paint, cranes, and other attributes, or should it be a different way of cooperating, like maybe they should insist on more on uh, public consultations or study visits. That's an open question, and um, yeah, just to just to start, that's a curator and an artist, an artist from Holland and a curator from Poland working together in Łódź. And as I can imagine, it's a vision of artist being um, painted on the wall, and the curator is only there to assist him with a, with a, with a specific you know, problems that can emerge on the way. So, um, you know, it's very hard to make a site-specific art contextual work without the proper research. And this is a case study of a work done by a street artist named Spy in Katowice at the festival, at the um, uh, Katowice Fe uh, Street Art Festival. Uh, he came to Poland with an idea of making a mural based on a lettering saying think. And uh, as you can see, and if you can't, I will tell you, this was uh, located, this is located in a, a very poor labor district of Katowice, where people work in, uh, in mining for um, basically the whole day and half of the night. And the question arises, what gives the right to the artist and to the curator to put this kind of questions to this specific community? Uh, we have different approaches to street art in Poland. Uh, we have two, big two biggest festivals of street art, of muralism, basically, to be, to be precise. One is in Łódź, the other one is in Katowice. In Łódź, the, the organizer tends to arrange very beautiful, illustrative, narrative murals, big illustrations without any um, problems in behind them. And in Katowice, they tend to problematize street art without any aesthetic values. I mean, this is very brutalistic, and, and, and you, can, you can imagine a person coming back from work after 10 or 12 long, 10 or 12 hour long shift from the mine and seeing this just in front of his windows. So uh, this is an open question. Um, 
if the research is, uh, I think the research is needed, is, is, is in, uh, in available, is, uh, you have really to get to know the area, the context, urbanistic, architectural, architectural, um, so social and, and historical context of the area where you are working. Uh, but how exactly this uh, consultation should be carried on? Uh, should about the project you're presenting as a curator, presenting a project of the mural to the community. Should you present it to the inhabitants of the house where the mural would be painted only, or the, 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 maybe the, the other house, nearby houses, maybe the, the whole district? Well, I'm not sure how is it in your countries, but in Poland, if you ask people living here, let's say you have 20 flats and maybe 60 people living inside, if you ask them about their opinion about the project, there you're gonna get have like 65, maybe 70 different opinions, which means like some of them will have two or three. So it's, it's, it's literally impossible to, to ask everyone. And uh, this is one of the biggest problems, I believe, with the public consultations and public viewings of the projects with the monumental paintings. And uh, the other question is, should we ask the, the people who are living in the actual house or we should ask the people who are living in the house nearby who see the mural from their windows? Uh, this is quite complicated and, and, and to be overthinked, probably. So, let's take a look at the artists and, and, and what they are doing and what strategies they are applying to the street art. Um, the artists themselves doesn't make it much easier, let's be honest. This is Mariusz M. C. T. Varas, probably the most well-known street artist in Poland, from Poland. The most well-known worldwide artist from Poland. And uh, he's, um, he's, he's a Total artist with a total project. It's called M City, like Mariusz City. So you can you can probably see what 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 he has on his mind. He's he's just painting cities one after the other, and he's doing this big um, big um, compositions with with um, the, 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 these compositions are parts of the same city called M City, Mario City. The, the, he's, he's not even giving uh, titles to the murals; he's just numbering them. So you know, it's uh, M City number 236, for example, or 237. And 10 months per year, he's traveling all over the world, painting murals. So you can imagine how many of them he's doing. He's doing hundreds and thousands of murals uh, everywhere in the world. And he's just giving numbers to them, and uh, rarely asking anyone about their opinion if if the mural is needed or not needed, if if, he's, if it's liked by inhabitants or it's not liked by them. So um, he once told me, I feel I'm. He said, I am a commandos of street art. I'm a, like a special trained soldier of street art. I'm being, I'm flying with a plane, and I'm being dropped from the plane. I'm landing on the ground, and I'm painting a mural and then I'm being evacuated by the plane and I'm going for another mission. So he says, I'm always painting three days. If the wall is very big, I'm using, I'm, I'm painting big objects. If, if the wall is smaller, I'm painting smaller objects, but I always work three days because the fourth day is the day that I have to go away to another festival to paint another wall. So this is a kind of approach that uh, is symptomatic for, for muralism. To be honest, uh, MCT recently started to paint socially and politically involved murals. This is a mural from Gdańsk, and it is referring to the, uh, to the current policy of, of the Polish government, about, uh, especially to regulations about ecology, forests, and, and animal hunting. And this gentleman here is our Minister of Environment. So, um, so just to be honest uh, with what is Mariusz doing, uh, he, it is not a very site-specific work, but it is at least uh, less narcissistic, uh, let's say. Um, okay, so even the artists who are willing to experiment with a, with a formal aspect of a mural are not leaving much space for the curators or the, or, or the local community. This is a case of um, Vova Vorotnyov, the artist from Kiev, Ukraine. And this is called anti-mural. So he's, he, he did a series of the murals that are not murals, actually. And he painted the areas, the surfaces around the wall, leaving the wall itself empty. So, um, you know, it's uh, very conceptual and um, probably much more site-specific than what is Marusz M. City doing, but still quite radical. 
Um, and it's not much space for curating here, actually. It doesn't matter for him which wall he's painting, or not painting in this case. He's just coming and doing that. So, um, yeah, so that would be the, the problem with the artist. But we have another problem. The other problem, on the other hand, is the municipal policy towards street art. And we have an advertisement from Łódź, which is a city in the middle of Poland, close to Warsaw. And uh, this is a billboard, and murals from Łódź are greeting street art from Warsaw. That's the, what is written here. Łódź, the capital of Polish murals. So you can see the capital of Polish murals. That's the, itself, it is quite strange. And, and this is like an official campaign of, of the city of Łódź. So, cities want to invite very well-known artists and collect them, literally, as you do in Pokemon Go. You can see most um, recognable, uh, the biggest name of um, international street art. Nichos, uh, Buff Monster, Banksy, Shepard Ferry, uh, above the, uh, Obey the Giant, Ozjimeos, Aris. Even some Polish guys like Seidner Best, they are from Łódź and... Um, so let's collect them all. Uh, Warsaw have, has uh, its own uh, mural of blue, let's say. Immediately, Krakow wants to have one too. So it, it, it works that way. Um, and of course, you have some more spectacular examples. This is a case study of the mural made by Osgemeos and Aris. Osgemeos are the twins from uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil, the probably most famous street artist, mural artist in the world. And Aris is a young emerging star from, um, from Spain, very talented uh, painter. This is a part done by Aris, this is the part done by Osimeos, and this is a stars combo. It's a, it's a big event in a, in a, in a, in a muralism war, uh, world. It's a star combo, and it was planned by the, by the city of Łódź for many months to, um, you know, to, 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 to properly match in time uh, guys from South America and the other guy from Spain who are traveling constantly all over the world painting walls. So there was a lot of negotiations if this is even possible, and agents were involved, and, you know, so it was quite, quite a, an operation. So we can imagine how much cities and the festivals run by the cities are uh, insisting on having the biggest names in their uh, public space. So we have these problems on many levels. We have the problem with the artist's attitude because they are realizing, they, they are doing their, their total projects, all lifelong projects like Marius and City Varas. You have a problem with municipal policy, with, with, with what cities want from the artist, and the circle is being completed. I mean, the, the cities want the same names with the same aesthetics, and the artists, even if they wanted to experiment, they cannot do that because they are kind of feel obliged to do something in their own aesthetic, and, 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 the, and the, 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 the circle is um, closed. So, recently, street art has reached uh, Northern Africa, the Maghreb countries in the Middle East, and you can see uh, a, a picture I took uh, last year in uh, Marrakesh. This is a stencil of a very famous French artist, C215, and, uh, yeah, and there's a boy from Marrakesh standing in front. So, um, so it's already there, and this is, I see it as the last chapter of a uh, neo-colonial, <laughs> Um, conqueror of the of the of the northern Africa, and um, there's a map of Rabat. It's a capital of Morocco, and these pins you see there are of course murals, murals done in the first edition of a international biennale of mural art in Rabat in 2016, and of course this year there was the same amount of murals done in Rabat again, and the next year there will be probably twice more of them, so it's, it's, the, the train is on the track, and it's going, so everyone wants to have a seat. So artists from Europe who are kind of bored already with the same cities, and every city already have their murals are starting to conquer again the Middle East and the Northern Africa. And we have Sick Boy from London, straight in the middle of uh, a medieval Medina in, uh, in Marrakesh. And please notice there are no um, regulations for that in Morocco, neither the other countries of North Africa, so you can't possibly 
forbid anyone to do that because there's no like a, a person in charge of aesthetic of the city because there's like no person in charge of many things in, in, in Northern Africa. So, um, so you can do whatever you like, you just ask a person who lives inside, who's an owner of the building, and you say like, do you like me to paint a mural on your building? And they always say, you hoo because it's like something different. So you, when you have a hotel, a Riyadh, then your Riyadh is now being advertised with a colorful mural. This is a mural of Matt C, um, a girl from uh, Hamburg, I think, or Hanover, from Germany, um, who's also a, kind of a star of uh, muralism, originated from graffiti, then started to do walls and traveling all over the world. And here she is in Africa too. Um, okay, and uh, that, that was kind of interesting. We're gonna get back to that, but I want just to tell another short story about my encounter with the curator in. Um, in Marrakesh, uh, I've met a girl who was curating a mural. I mean, she was standing in front of the wall, and there was an artist on a crane painting, so I figured probably she's a curator. And she said, um, yes, 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 we just have this project, we're doing murals, and we want to show everyone, we want to show the world that Morocco is a normal country, like every other country. We're gonna have murals like the rest of us, like the rest of you, like the rest of Europe. And I asked, do you really want to have the same murals that we have in Europe, that we're quite bored with in Europe, everywhere, like from you know, Poland to Portugal, in your medieval medinas that have a unique shape listed on the, on the heritage of UNESCO list. Do you really want it? After 600 years of, of using only lettering in public space, no narrative, figurative images, only lettering like this funny alphabet they use. Do you really want to be the same? And she said, of course, of course. So, And this is Kiev. Some of you may know this city, even live there. And it's Kiev filled with what? With street art, of course. Um, especially concentrated in an area of Podil region, but also at the left side of the Dnipro, uh, where you have like this really big sleeping areas for hundreds of thousands of people. And it's getting fast. I mean, I'm, I always say about Ukraine, they are not toying with that. I mean, they are, they are really hard, like, let's do some murals. They don't do 10 of them. They don't do 50 of them. They, they do 100 per year. So it's like fast, blitzkrieg. And um, so, uh, yeah, but uh, fortunately, some of people in, in Kiev are quite aware with that. And there, was, there were girls yesterday, uh, they are not here, unfortunately, who want to catapult some paint to destroy murals in Kiev. So it was quite interesting for me, and I, want to, I would love to talk more about it with them, because that's, that's really interesting. So this is a mural by Finton McGee from Australia, uh, in, uh, somewhere in Livobzizna, I think, or I don't know, somewhere quite far from the center of the city. So these murals are getting wider and wider. And as it was said yesterday by the girls from Kiev, they usually try to... Um, the the, the site-specific aspect of these murals are basically using some ornaments from Ukraine culture, Ukrainian culture. Vishivankas, yes? That, that was the name. So, uh, yeah, maybe not that much. And um, in, in case of neocolonialism, uh, just to somehow extend the subject, this is from Art United Us profile. It's a group that is behind the muralism in Kiev. And they say, uh, it's in Polish, but I will. Uh, Can you imagine that? It's not Berlin. It's not Amsterdam. It's Kiev. So, you know, it's like, it's Kiev at last. We are like all the other cities in Europe and USA and everywhere. At last. Hooray. And there was a lot of likes, yeah, 103. So, uh, of course, this is a, this metro, this is subway is being commissioned. It's it's not like a spontaneous underground graffiti covering. It's like a commission for an artist from South America. So, uh, yeah, South America. But they, they do really like to go for Ukraine because yeah, I, I also do. I mean, the conditions are perfect for artists. I'm I'm, I'm I was also doing some art in public space in, in Ukraine, also murals and 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 I'm, I'm it's very professionally done in terms of organizing everything, but the question is if you really need that in Kiev. <laughs> and this is a mural from Ivano-Frankivsk, done by Zbiok. 
from, by Sławek Tchaikovsky. And this is a funny story because he was, he was uh, in, invited by a curator from Ivana Frankivs and asked to paint a mural. And I think they were very uh, intellectually um, involved into the process of, of Slavic is uh, known of, of, of being a, a very discursive and dis intellectual artist who's overthinking his work very much. And, and, uh, and the curator also, as far as I know him, is a very aware person. And they did a wall like that, and I, I think the cooperation between artist and curator was quite well. But the problem is that citizens were offended by the mural, and uh, and they said, like I quote, "We were, you hurt our feelings." So um, <laughs> there was even an internet meme showing murals from Paris, Berlin, and uh, these are murals from Paris, and this is mural from Ivano Frankivsk. So Zbijak became kind of an internet meme for for, uh, and there there was actually a, a special branch in the city established after this mural to pay attention to what artists are doing in public space to prevent such a scandal in future. So sometimes murals can really, uh, you know, work. Good. So that would be pretty much what I wanted to say about uh, the strategies of the cities, artists and curators. And let's go to the participatory art and to working with people. I'm not going to say this is the good way to do that, but I will show you how, how I was doing that for several times. Maybe I'm always looking for new ways to cooperate with people, with local communities, with, with other artists. So let's take a look. Um, that's me. Uh, we've been exactly five years ago. My Facebook showed it to me today. Exactly five years ago, I've been to, in May 2012, I've been to Lugansk. And this is me. There and these are people there drawing characters, and we are preparing a mural together. Um, yeah, with kids and, and, and more kids. And my friend Martin from Watch, who's a comic drawer illustrator, we've been there together. For uh, we've been invited by Stan organization by Yaroslav Minkin and his crew. And uh, yeah, that's me showing something, probably. And uh, yeah, more characters, and more participants, and more beautiful participants, and yeah, even more beautiful participants. And yeah, that's us again. And the characters, and the characters are based on the, on the novel of Sergei Zhadan, Veroshilovgrad, which takes action, I mean, it, it happens in Lugansk, of course, and um, the, the, the story was that I, we, we, we did a comic book based on a book of Bajedan, we, we adapted it with Marcin together, Voroshilovgrad, for a comic book, and uh, we, we took the, the ready comic book to Lugansk, it, it was printed there, and uh, there was a big party, picnic, and yeah, that was a lot of fun, but we also painted murals. And with, with, the, with the local community, with, with youngsters, with a, this is a dog called um, Pachmutova, if I'm correct, from, uh, from the book of Zidane. Uh Yeah, Sabachka, Pachmutova, and uh, some, some participants painting. This was probably the, the, the first murals in uh, Lugansk, as far as I know. We've been also cooperating with some local artists from graffiti scene in Lugansk with a guy named Start. He was doing some rooftops on the tops of the buildings, very interesting, uh, well, very illegal at first um, activity. And um, so they joined us with some girls and, and it was really, really nice. We had a lot of funny stories, but this is a completely different um, subject. But this is one of the of the of the examples how you can cooperate with the with the local community and try to so we took a book about this actual city we, that we go to we adapted it to the comic book we gave the comic book for free to everyone of course we've been supported by by stun organization we didn't do that by by our self effort but um, but I think it was quite well done in terms of cooperating with local community uh, this is a different project. Just after I came back from Ukraine, uh, I did a very personal, site-specific project in a Museum of Contemporary Art in Krakow. And uh, this is a, a backyard of the museum. Um, the museum is being um, is, is, is uh, built in um, in a former rural district of the city, Zabłocie. Mm, and it's the, the building where the museum is currently situated was my first workshop. I was I had my 
my, paint, my workshop there when I was uh, still studying, before the museum was completed there, before even anyone imagined that the museum will be completed there any time in future. And I was invited by the museum to, to, to do a participatory work with the, with the visitors of the museum to commemorate uh, previous functions of the building. And the previous function was a printing house because my family was running a private printing house, uh, a small, small printing house in, uh, in, this, in this building. So uh, I proposed a, a mural uh, based on uh, four colors of polygraphy, C, M, Y, and K. You have cyan, magenta, yellow, and, and black. This is a printing process. You, you use four colors to achieve the... Uh, well, anyway, we, 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 I did a, a sketch. That's the sketch, as you can see. And I let people to fill it in with whatever they liked. And they did. With some more things than I expected, actually. And so we had some fun doing that together. And it was, uh, on a, on a, from one side, my very personal project, because it was about my his family history and about my childhood in this building, and about polygraphy that was part of my life. And, 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 and on the other hand, I, uh, people could add whatever they liked. So uh, yeah, this is the, the ready picture that was exhibited there in, a, in, the, back, in the yard of the museum for uh, I think a month from, from a month time from, um, from the action. Okay, we have another, another example. This is last year. It's a local community at Polish province. It's a northern part of the... Yeah, yeah, we have to finish. And we will very soon. And uh, this is a province at the, at the northern part of Poland uh, where I um, recently started to leave because we have a house there. And there are local people drawing a history of this, um, of this um, village. The history starting from the Slavic... Uh, unseen time of Kurhans and, and you know ending up at the um, at the current day so you have yeah, young people old people drawing together uh, kind of a comic on the wall about about this village yeah so they're having fun and there was a fireplace and sausages and beer and you know whatever everything you need to to really um, make the community together. Yeah, so that's uh, one of the examples. Of course, you need the design and you need to draw it fast, but you, you can discuss it with the, with the community to ask whatever they really want to talk about. So I think they are quite happy and, and even proud of, uh, out of, the, of this picture because they do a lot of selfies in front of it. So I believe they, they are proud. Yeah, okay, that is, it's me helping. And this is the last project. It's a participatory, participatory um, mural. Well, not exactly mural, because it's not a real wall. But, uh, and this is in Wroclaw uh, last year. And there's like a big fantasy literature convention called, called Polkon, like Polish convention. And uh, every year people meet to you know, talk about science fiction, fantasy, and whatever they really like. And I was asked to work with, with people who go for the festival to do an illustration to one of the books of Stanislav Lem. It's a Polish author, science fiction author, quite popular from, uh, died 10 years ago, but uh, quite popular. So we did, a, it's uh, Pilot Pirks, one of the characters from the book, and he's, uh, it's a Russian toy with uh, three pigs and a wolf. Like, uh, it's a teen toy. You, you have to escape with the pigs. Do you know it? Uh, anyway, it's a, it's a toy. Yeah, and the robot. Yeah, generally, that's that's what I wanted to show you, as a, as a as a as a proposition how to possibly work with a local community. But it's not the probably not the the only way or neither the best way. Just the way. Thank you.